Is it a function? <laughs> yes. Hey, listen to Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 306. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan. Today we're going to continue the arc of the secrets of EDH by doing a top five in five. Now, hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? We are here. What is going down? Whole ton is going down. We've got another episode in the secrets of EDH. We've got a deck from one of our editors coming in that is based upon another piece of content that we like to do. <laughs> but before we get to any of that and explaining what any of that means, we have to thank our official business dad. It's FusionGamingOnline.com. They're your source for all of your gaming needs. Very much so. Yes. I got, my, I got all my Fusion orders in, I think. Yeah, I think I did too. You know how many there were? Four? Five. Five. I think I had three. I got five of them, and they all kind of came in different ways. There was one that came tracked with the little thing where I had to go to the post office to pick it up. Yep. There were three of them that were just in little envelopes, and there was yep. another one that came in the bubble mailer, like the one that I had to go to pick up at the post office, but I didn't have to go pick that one up at the post office. I just got it in the, in the, mail, 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 in the mailbox. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. But I got them all. Got all the new cards in decks, new cards in binders. New Capanna has been absorbed into everything and now i can forget all about it 100 percent and look forward to nothing except for the return to the forgotten realms which i'm very excited about oh mm -hmm. is that our next set mm -hmm. are you sure pretty sure i don't know it's the one in june Ooh, that's pretty far away to not have a magic set that's like i guess that's next month it's like five weeks frick <laughs> 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 i got all my Streets of New Capenna. We always call it New Capenna, but it's actually the streets of New Capenna. Whatever. Yeah, it makes it sound hard as F. I don't know. What's Old Capenna? It should be Old Capenna because that's like way more gangsta sounding and oh. way more. Well, no, this is like Art Deco sounding. <clears throat> this is this is New Capenna. This is this is how it is now with like the demons and stuff. Old Capenna was when the when the angels and demons were doing butt stuff together, and now now the demons crushed them up and snorted them. Oh, yeah. This is New Capenna, Brando. Okay. Well, times see, are times are changing. Yeah. Well, CCO Spring special promo code five percent off everything you order from <clears throat> FusionGamingOnline.com. Let them know that their partnership with us is a good one and save some money on the shit that you're gonna buy anyway. Yes, I was gonna buy them anyways. I I was gonna buy them anyways because there was actually, I ordered more stuff for me for myself than I did to to alter every Thursday on our Facebook page, Dang. which is not typically the case. Usually, you know how you do when you have a bunch of like like uh evergreen decks or forever decks whatever you call them and it's like you uh you buy one card for here you one card for here oh there's a new foil land that you buy one of right but no i built like a whole new angel deck <laughs> and i built a whole new sapperling deck with jetmir and um the G ginny fay right yeah yeah i'm doing the sapperling thing with those so i needed a bunch of cards and and of course all the triomes mm -hmm. needed some triomes got a lands deck need them I got two triomes. Yes. Two. I'm, I got a few of each of them, which is weird. I only opened two of the triomes in anything that I opened, and they were all the ones that I wanted. Yep. So I got, like, the wrestling ring one yep. and the artifact-looking one that doesn't look like a land, and then that one in foil also. Sure. Which is what I opened, which was cool because I wasn't going to pay money for those, but now I have one, so I can play it. And you save 5%. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And uh, now I've got every triome that says island on it to help trigger my mystic sanctuary <laughs> to get uh, instance or to get instance and sorceries back from uh, my graveyard neat so now i have a land that does a regrowth slash eternal witness thing in cool. my lands deck that i don't need to take damage for when i draw with ad nauseum whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of good vehicles for calamax also Whoop, whoop. Did you get getaway car? That's my favorite one. I got the I got the one that 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 exiles guard cards from graveyards. The and that, hearse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. An unlicensed hearse. Yep. That's a good one. That's gonna be a good card right there. That's a solid one. That's I ordered one of each gooder. art for getaway car. So I got like a regular one and a foil one, an extended art one, and a foil extended art one. I don't know why. I have no idea. None of them are in a deck right now. And this I, is why you shouldn't have access to funds. They were a dollar. They this were is a dollar. this is like a, what is it called? Like um. Um, they were a dollar. It's the best place in all time. Uh, when people are under like a, uh, what is it called? A con conservatorship or something where, where somebody else manages their money for them? Yeah, like Britney Spears. Like Britney Spears, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We what? need to get that for you. <laughs> <laughs> it could be Brando Spears. Ooh. Brittany Brando. Brand? Did I say Brando? I was going to say Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Brandony? Brandony. Brandony. That just sounds weird. I don't like that. Anyway, moving along. To we the deck today. We got yeah. Stuff. We we've got other Magic the Gathering topics to get to. We who's our commandy? We gave the hints yesterday that the hints are exactly the same as last week's hints, with the additional hint of it's a different card. Y- yes. So if you missed it last week, but guessed this one, which I think a few people did, I'm well, sure they did. Well, here we are. We're gonna do did what is this? Denry Clin, editor in chief. <laughs> A stupid name. It's a 2-2 Cat Advisor, or Cat Visor, as we say around here. Just like last week. White, blue, two. Comes into play with your choice of a 1-1 counter, first strike, or vigilance counter. Whenever a non-token creature you control enters the battlefield of Denry has counters on it, put the same number and kind of counters on that creature. (gasps) Cat Visor deals with counters. Not the same deck as last week at all, if that's what you're concerned about, because we would not do that. I did have a deck queued up where I was like, ooh, we just kind of did the same thing. And then I found this, and I was like, ooh, we kind of did just do the same thing. Then I read the description from Editor T. Coates. It's his deck. And I was like, this is the exact kind of dumpster fire that we started CCO for. (laughs) And I mean that in the most lovingly way, because it's exactly the kind of thing that I love and, like Brando said in the intro, top five and five. Mm-hmm. So for people who, who don't know, we'll peel back our curtain. This is Editor Tyler's deck. He's the guy responsible for top five in five editing. We send him a chunk of video. Usually it's all just cut up and terrible looking. Mm-hmm. And he puts it like picture in picture and shows cards and puts everything on it and memes us. And he actually put up the video of us going into a dumpster that was on fire last week. Did you see it? <laughs> yeah. Um, so watch those because Tyler makes them look really good. And we've molded those kind of into the shape that we think that people would. And if you haven't watched those, maybe, maybe it would behoove your business to head on over to our YouTube page and subscribe because Tyler works really hard on them. Yep. Thank you. Yes. And if you didn't watch that on YouTube, wow. you're, you're you're missing out. You missed out, yeah. <laughs> on the inside of Brando's nostrils, almost. <laughs> That's how close he was. <laughs> the but, point is we're doing cat visors. We're doing illegal partners. But, hey, we're on Capanna. Illegal is the name of the game. Yeah. If, if people don't let us rule zero the Karuga partner in this deck, totally fine because it's kind of outside of the deck. Mm-hmm. And... We could just crush it up and snort it, yeah, or cook the, it on a spoon and inject it. Yeah, Karugas cost less than a dollar. You could do that with one and be fiscally responsible. Yeah, mm-hmm. I suppose. Mm-hmm. And most things that you snort or inject into your bloodstream cost more than a dollar and are probably worse for you than cardboard. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Mm-hmm. I can't say that I've ever eaten a magic card. But you did. But I did. It didn't. was a moonlight bargain. It was foil. You ate it in half. I'm sure you got some of it inside your body. Mm-hmm. 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 Cannot confirm nor deny. I will confirm and not deny. Just like getting hammered in the commander area in Vegas. Neither confirm nor deny. Nope. Mm-hmm. I cannot confirm mm-hmm. nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> We've got some podcasting business, though. Okay, let's we, hit him with it. We read the commander. We said that there's a rule zero. We thank Tyler. Totally medium guy. Yeah. We've got a pack to give away. And I do have new Capenna packs in the booster sack. The stinky onion bag, that That is. That works, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just shake them a little bit like this fast, like. Yep. And I pull one out. And if it's like, whatever. Yep. So last week, not a whole ton of people got that it was... um, It's very rare that we fool people. I'm kind of proud of us. Cross defense coordinator, right? Yeah. But we also asked for uh, something else. Why it's pants. And not pant. Yeah, we got a lot like and people, actual legitimate. Y- yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they used to be, they used to come individual of each other. Yeah, pantaloons. And I knew like one leg is a pant. Like I knew that. And some people just said that. But some people said like they were sold individually and you had to, but now for convenience sake. Yeah, now we and understand. Modern, modern technology just makes them together. <laughs> so anyways, somebody who said something along that line, the winner, Ghee Pizza. Oh, that's I like that guy. Yes, he's yes. A, he's fine. Friend, patron, designer of the CCO skeleton sticker. 
Very fun. Yes. CCO Skeleton Sticker inspired some of the look of some of the additional stuff that we're going to be doing. Stay, stay tuned to CCO in June, I guess, eh? Yeah, I don't even know what he's talking about, so this is cool. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, I've been working with a couple other people in the nation, kind of just keeping everything rolling towards the end goal. Yeah, see, Ryan doesn't tell me anything so that I can be surprised by it when it happens, yeah. and then we get those authentic reactions. Oh, yeah. It's not like I'm looking at a script on my phone or something while we talk about a deck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oops. We're at the point now where we're basically just like that – that tiny snowball that started to roll downhill that started to get bigger and bigger. But instead of just picking up snow, it's rolled over like somebody's picnic and like a pile Snowmobile. of cow poop and a tree. And it's just like all just just giant ball of rolling downhill at this. A baby fox, a dozen eggs. Yep. Side of bacon. Yep. Mm. I was going to say, yes, I was going to say some cheese. I don't know why there was cheese on the hill. Yeah. But we're here. Now, oh, speaking of sides of bacon, we should uh, big thanks to our boy Keel who oh, put us up last weekend. Yes. And Regina made us a delicious breakfast, gave us a nice warm place to stay. We got to meet his pirate cat, Leo. He's only got one eye, but he's yep. doing really good. Likes to do the thing where he nuzzles you with his head, but like nuzzles oh. your finger like inside of his empty eye socket, which was weird. But I've never had my finger inside of a cat's skull before, and that was neat. Oh, I'm not going to mm. make any jokes. Mm-hmm. Not gonna make any jokes about eye sockets. No, don't. It's it's a thing. It's it's a thing, and it's cool. And we had a great time. We met lots of people from the nation. Made lots of new friends. Played some great games. Had a great time. Drank a lot of beer. Paid a hundred dollars for pizza, and ninety two dollars for pizza. That's that's a real story. And then we went to sleep and drove home in those like where we're not hung over, but we're kind of hung over, and it's like we're just real quiet. Oh just man, driving home. I wasn't. I didn't even l- roll off of my air mattress yet, and. Keel had a beer in the morning, and my only regret of the whole weekend was sleeping in your clothes because that was mine. Oh no, I took all my clothes off. Oh, I slept in my clothes. Yeah, I took all my clothes off. My only regret of the weekend was not taking a picture of the mound of breakfast food and posting it to the food and drink thread on our Discord. Oh yeah, but I described it for them, so I'll describe it here for anybody who's not a patron. Okay. Though you should be. We'll talk about that in a sec. There was a. An entire mound, like a plate that had a mound of two different kinds of sausage on it, mm-hmm. cooked in maple syrup, because what other way do you cook breakfast sausage? I, I don't know. Also, bacon, also cooked in maple syrup. Yes. Is there a more Canadian food? No. No. Beer. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Which we had at the same yes, time which as we also this had, bacon yes. and sausage. <laughs> uh, there was a whole plate of toast. There was... A sliced tomato, and it's like, what, what? This sucks. What? There's only bacon and sausage so far, but wait, there's more. Yeah. Keel cooked every single kind of egg that we asked him to. I was like, I don't really like eggs. I like sunny side up. I like this. I like scrambled. He made everything, yeah. and there was like three plates of eggs. He made like three dozen eggs, and, and we ate all of them. Yep, yep, yep. And then, if that's not enough, here he is with these big ass motherfucking potatoes, yeah. and he's shredding these potatoes on the potato shredding thing. And then he's like, "I'm gonna shred an onion in here too because that would be delicious." And then he gets them in this giant tea towel and rinses all that starchy white shit off of them. Mm-hmm. And then he deep fries them in this big skillet thing. He deep fries them until they're like crispy fried shredded potato hockey pucks it was like and they were so freaking good it was like a mcdonald's hash brown except big and good big and good and homemade yeah the good is key because i don't really like McDonald's hash browns. and everybody was like slamming me and beaking me because i was like i don't like breakfast i got ruined on breakfast because i used to work at like this camp that had three thousand people in it where they just like to cook an egg they pretty much just took the egg and tossed it onto a hot plate and fucking here you go here's your egg you stupid idiot <laughs> right and that's my egg experience for years your egg experience yeah you know? then keel made the, this whole breakfast and i ate the whole thing like every single bite and went back for sausage and bacon and eggs and hash browns yes you, you do the thing where you're sitting there with your beer on the counter and you're just like you're still eating even though you should not be eating oh at all. yeah oh yeah yeah that, it was that, delicious that so. pain that you get when you eat too much I moved past that pain into, like, euphoria. Yeah. 
and then into pain again. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw the edge of the universe yeah, and I yeah, came back yeah, because there was bacon. It's it was like good. Conan the Barbarian when, when the lady asks him, does anything hurt you? He goes, only pain. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, does anything hurt you? Only breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a great time and we were happy to meet everybody. And thanks again to Keel for putting us up and yep. uh, feeding us because that was a lot of work. And I'm sure lots of dishes afterwards. Oh, yeah. Whew. I would have just burned my whole house down. Yeah. We just left beer cans and a case of beer and a whole Mickey of Fireball that we didn't even open. <laughs> and I was like, are you sure you don't want help cleaning up? He's like, no, it's fine. Cool. That's the best part. Like, are you sure? All like the fun, you... none of the clean. Yeah. I like Neat. it. Yeah. We got one more piece of business. Hit him with it. I mentioned Patreon a little while ago, food and drink thread in our Discord, which is one of the benefits. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple new Patreon nicknames to do, which is another one of the benefits benefits yeah. over at patreon.com slash cco podcast mm -hmm. quick aside another benefit coming up is your name being credited in our upcoming content oh yeah we'll have a little credit roll credit screen whatever it is and if you want your name attached to our content because you like it you want to support it you want to keep it coming you want to be entertained and you want your friends and family that you play with to be entertained you should probably become a patron yeah and couldn't, you get a nickname couldn't hurt yeah. A nickname like our, our new friends that we're about to give nicknames to. Right now. <laughs> friends. Okay, here we go. First new Patreon nickname. And check your messages because I want to send you a, a CCO sticker pack or a token pack as well. Another benefit. Okay. Andrew Chaplin. Famous last name. Pseudo-celebrity slash descendant of Charlie. Andy Chaplin. Or Andy Chapstick. Andy Chap Ass. Yeah, there we go. Andy assless chap ass. Andy wears Andy, one pant. <laughs> Andy assless chap. I like that. Assless chap. Yeah. Andy ass chap. Yep. Like it. Next one. <laughs> Any combination thereof. Yes. Andy and chap and ass and chapless ass and chapped ass. Anything. Lots of things. Yeah. Next one. Yeah. And and I don't doesn't really. I don't know. We'll just give him a nickname. This is Chris, the Commander Mechanic on YouTube. Became a patron of ours. What? Yes. Oh. Never heard of her? Yeah. Never heard yeah. of her. Does she play for the Bears? No, plays for the Commander the... Mechanic YouTube channel. <laughs> oh. Well, that's nice of them to do. Yeah, I we, yeah. I, I like when I like when content creators b become our patrons. I like when anybody becomes our patrons, <laughs> but I like when content creators become our patrons because that means like other creators like what we do. Oh, that's important. So more than anything, uh, you know, we we and we always toss toss out the the faux shade, right? Never heard of her and like whatever. But like seriously, Commander Mechanic. I watch their channel. I I, I am. I like it. I have also seen. But I'm I'm less active on the internet as people probably are aware. Yeah. Because I'm basically a caveman. Mm -hmm. Also, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So big thanks to Chris. Big thanks to Commander Mechanic Channel just for putting out good content. Go and watch them. Give them a sub. Uh, you probably already subbed to them and not fucking us. So f you, Chris Commander Mechanic. 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 Like, now Mechanic, like from uh, He Man. He was the guy with the worst power because his thing was like he could just make his neck really long, <laughs> like, a, like a periscope, and he could like look around. Like everybody else can do magic and fly, and they're a bee, and they Disappear. can control animals, and they can breathe underwater, and they can control animals with their brains, or the strongest man in the universe, or their Skeletor. This guy, no, no, he's he's got make a his long neck, neck real long, long, and then he's got a, like a little club as a weapon. He can even shoot lasers out of his head. Like, there's just no point in his head being up there. You just sneak up behind him and, like, tip him over. Because he'd be real top-heavy. You're, like, unbalanced because his neck's so freaking long. <laughs> Chop him down like a tree. Right? Mac neck. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, excellent. Speaking yeah. of mech, there is some mechanical stuff behind Denry Klin in this art. Printing press. Printing press, yeah. Mm. The, um... Uh, Revolutionized the entire world. The OG spreader of misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> We've only gone up from there. Uh, should we talk about some cards? Should we do a deck? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ryan. Here's We're going to start with the gimmick, and then you're going to tell us what the secret is, but I'm going to tell them what the gimmick is. We already spoiled it a little bit. It's Karuga the Macro Sage, top five and five. So all of the cards 
in the deck are either featured in a top five and five. Which is fantastic because that's Tyler partly taking credit in his work. Yeah, taking pride in his or, work. Sorry, yeah, taking pride in his work is what I mean, yes. And every other thing either costs five or has total power and toughness five. So you're going to see some some stinkers in here, but they had to fit the theme, they had to fit the gimmick, and eventually when we get to the end, Ryan's going to tell us what the secret and why we're doing this this gimmicky thing is. Yes. Yes. So we're going to start at the top of the list. We don't have custom categories today because, again, it is a gimmick deck. We're going to start with the Planeswalkers, starting with the Streets of New Capenna's own Elspeth Resplendent. Elspeth Resplendy. Holy smokes. This is a five drop. Yep. Oh, you, you, you outlined that already. Yeah, went over that. <laughs> five loyalty, <laughs> which, <laughs> which fits just coincidentally there. Plus one. Choose up to one... Target creature, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature, and uh, and a flying counter or first strike counter or, or vigil- lifeline counter or vigilance counter. Yes, so you could put those kinds of counters on Denry Clin, and then when your creatures ETB, they get those kinds of counters too. Yes, they're also big with lifelink or vigilance or first strike or flying or whatever you want. That's a that's a pretty good card in the deck a, already. Yeah. It also makes angels and gives you stuff off the. Actually, I don't think it's. The minus three actually barely works because it only gets three drops, so I wouldn't try that. But it's there for the first ability. Moving on, Jace, Unraveler of Secrets. Five drop, five loyalty again. Eh. That's cool. Plus one, scry one, then draw a card. Really good, actually. Yeah, pretty good. Really good. For five mana, I don't know, but in a gimmick deck, really good. It's, it does its job. Yep. And, I, and it's also got the minus two, return a creature to its owner's hand, so it's got some removal attached to it as well. Yep. Which you could activate twice, like not in a row, but over two turns. Yep. And then minus eight emblem with whenever an opponent casts their first spell each turn, counter that spell. Oof. Never going to get there unless Arayo, you're hiding behind the chip. Arayo Soratami Ascendant is a banned card in Commander. That's what that card does. Yeah. 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 Tefri Hero of Dominaria. Yeah, yeah. Tefri yeah. Hero of D. This... And and let me just let me just say something here. Okay. Frick. <laughs> <laughs> so every once in a while I goes onto the Facebooks. Okay. And I see you know those big commander groups, they got 20,000, 40,000 people in them. Sure. And you see like show off your favorite play mat posts or things of that ilk. Uh-huh. And there's like 3 400 comments. Here's my play mat. Here's my play mat, right? Yeah. I went in just to see what the kids like these days. Sure. You know, maybe get some ideas for some future CCO merch, maybe. Sure. Don't I see fucking Samuel L. Teffrey playmat, just like the one that's in the background of Studio CCO in the top five videos? Right. And the guy says, this is the best playmat in this whole thread. You can't change my mind. Period. I win the internet or whatever, something like that, right? Uh, And it's fucking like 1030 at night. And I marched downstairs, and I took a picture of the backdrop of Studio CCO, <laughs> and I replied directly to that guy, and I was like, this is the original. It's hanging in my studio. I win the fucking internet, <laughs> and you're using stolen art. <laughs> I own this, and you didn't ask to use it, nor did you ask the original artist, and... Your crop to make it fit a 24 by 13 and a half inch playmat, cut off the artist's name, you fucking guy. I win the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was pissed. What did he say? Nothing. Of course said nothing. Yeah. I Wait. didn't I didn't make that big of a deal out of it. I'm I'm actually kinda happy that I own something that people like so much. Are you a mild NFT bro? Does that make you an NFT, bro? No, nah, because you actually own a thing. You I, own I own something. the physical thing. Yes, yeah, it is a just, real thing. It's not just ones and zeros that look like a thing that, in a computer screen. That barely look like a thing. Let's but keep... everybody who plays MTGO and everybody who plays Arena are NFT bros and gals because they just own NFTs that are magic cards. Yeah. Ooh, let's yeah. move on yeah, before let's we get into trouble. Directly off of that. 20, <laughs> 26 trash bag creatures in this oh, deck. Man. And we're going to prove that they're trash bag creatures by starting with Absan Battle Priest. <laughs> what? <laughs> now. <laughs> he put this in here on purpose. <laughs> Yeah. 
you can tell. You can tell that this is the kind of jank that we live for. If, if Tyler can some way assemble a deck that includes an Abzan battle priest in a way that makes it a functioning deck, this is this is what we do. This is what we want because people are going to love this because we love it. People are going to love it because they can tell that we love it. And this is the kind of deck that I want to sit down in a pod with. I'm playing shitty ass crab tribal. Tyler's playing. Tyler's playing Rule Zero, Karuga, everything is five. Everything. What are you playing? What are you bringing to this pod? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Abzan Battle Priest. Ass man, ass man, butt priest. Yes. A 3-2 equals five mm -hmm. for four. Mm -hmm. Outlast one. Mm -hmm. So outlast one means you can go, or outlast white, I should say. Yeah. Is white, tap, put a plus one counter on a creature. Outlast only as a sorcery. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. And then each creature you control with a plus one, plus one on it has lifelink. Cool. That's actually good. Yeah. <clears throat> Abzan Falconer. Oh, jeepers creepers. <laughs> a two, three, Outlast for white. Put a plus one on. Each creature you control with a plus one on it has flying. Oh, okay. Alhru Solemn Ritualist. Kind of sexy, actually. Oh, yeah. 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 Are those tattoos or burn marks? I'm not sure. Or, or like, like stab wounds? I'm into it either way. Stab wounds on the side? That looks like the spear hole that Jesus has on him. Jeepers, man. Yeah, it it got dark real quick. Deep cut, yeah. This is a 6-6. Six, uh, a 3-3 six, six. A three, three for 5. Enters the battlefield. Put a plus 1 counter on each of up to two other target creatures. Whenever a non-token creature you control with a plus 1 on it dies, create a 1-1 one, one, White spirit creature token with flying. And we call the spirits with flying actual ghosts. Uh -huh. And then we call the spirits without flying, they're just ghosts. Actual ghosts versus ghosts? Yes, because ghosts are like ghosts. But like actual ghosts can do ghost shit like fly around. Oh. Very ethereal. It's and, very important. And, and what's cool here is when those when those actual ghosts <laughs> would come onto the battlefield, they would get all the counters that Denry Klin has. That's right. Okay, cool. Angelic Sleuth. Angelic Sleuth? Mm. That's not my next card. You give that one a read. <laughs> Angelic Sleuth is a 2-3, which equals 5 for 3, with flying Angel Advisor. Oh! <laughs> Whenever another permanent you control leaves play, if it had counters on it, you investigate. Sure. Avenging Hunt Bonder. Avenging Hunt Bonder? I like this card. This is a cool card. Okay, this uh, this is a 3-3 three, three for 5, double strike. That's cool. When Avenging Hunt Bonder... Bonder. That is, yep, that's what it's called. Yep. Attacks. Put a double strike counter on another target attacking creature. Oh, baby. So you put on Denry if he's attacking, then all your guys ETB with double strike. That's right. That's freaking that's good. Right. Also, that's cool art on that card, too. That would be a cool playmat. There you with go. The cat in the background. That's really neat. I like that. Azores Elocutors. <laughs> oh, baby. Another advisor. It's <laughs> oh, like man. it's like Tyler knew. Yeah, it's like he knows It's like us. he knew, yeah. Three five for five, two of which are the Azorius hybrid. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a filibuster counter on them. If they have five or more filibuster counters on it, you win the game. Whenever source deals combat dam or deals damage to us, we take a filibuster counter off. So this is an alternate win con. You could win in five turns with this unless you could proliferate in some way. Yes. I don't think we Yeah, we can in this deck. There's a couple of proliferate cards. Can I move? A filibuster counter onto Denry Klin, then all my creatures ETB with filibuster counters on it, then move all my counters onto one creature, win with filibusters. Yes. Filibuster combo. Yes. Oh, fuck, I want to do that so hard. <laughs> I want to filibuster all over everybody's face. <laughs> Although, I think you still, I think it's still an upkeep trigger. Don't care. Because it does all the thing, and then. And then, you, yes. Oh, man, I hate that. Okay, Basri's Acolyte. Basri's Acolyte. Light, not an advisor. Cut it. This is a 2-3. Th uh, Lifelink enters the battlefield, put a plus one counter on each of up to two other target creatures. Oh, so just like that, that ghost. Yeah. Blade Griff prototype. Blade Griff butt type. Give it a read. Is a 3-2 flyer for five, so it checks both boxes. Whenever it deals dam combat damage to a player, destroy target non-land permanent of that player's choice that one of your opponents controls. Sure. That's fine. That's a that's a really indirect. He's like, hey man, you want to take three to kill that Marari's wake? Yeah, dude, I'll take three to kill somebody else's Marari's wake. And then you get in there, and then Jesse gets all mad. Oh yeah, because Jesse oh, always man. plays Marari's wake. Ah, uh, frick! I played. Uh, uh, we'll talk about it later. 
<laughs> Celestial regulator. Another, another, another angel advisor. Yeah. yeah. Two, three, flying, enters the battlefield, choose target creature you don't control and tap it. If you control a creature with a counter on it, which we do, the chosen creature doesn't untap its next untap step. So it just, it freezes something or ices something, right? Yes. Yeah. Deep glow skate. Deep, deep glow skate. It doubles the amount of counters on any number of target permanents. Yes. Ooh, good card. It's pretty good. Good card. Remember when that card was like 30 bucks? Why did it go down so much? Did it get reprinted? It got reprinted in Commander Anthology, and I think it got reprinted somewhere else. It looks like it's on in Mystery Boosters or something. Yeah, it was in the list as well. Okay. Mystery Boosters or slash list, in addition to Commander Anthology. Elite Scale Guard. Oh, enters the battlefield Bolster 2, which is... Choose a creature you control with the lowest power and put two plus ones on it? I think it's toughness. Oh, toughness. It's sure. either one. Oh, yeah, because it makes it tougher. Bolstering yeah. is making something, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one counter on it attacks, tap target creature defending player controls. It's a pretty good card. Actually. That's a good card because all of our creatures would attack and, tr and, and they all have counters on them. Tap all the blockers. Tap and... all the blockers. Yeah, that could be like a win con. Gavany Silversmith. Enters the battlefield, put a plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. This is a good one. Herald of Secret Streams. Creatures you control with plus one counters on them can't be blocked. Yeah. That's just like that last guy that taps all the creatures. That's a cool one. Keen Sight Mentor. Hey, get this. This is a 1-5. Or, sorry, a 1-4. <laughs> this is a 1-4, so CMC or uh, power and toughness still equal to 5. Too bad we're not playing uh, green. We could play, um, what's that card? ETBs, you search for something that has the same power and toughness. Wild pair. Wild pair, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, when this enters the battlefield, put a vigilance counter on target non-human creature you control. Good thing that Denry Clint is a cat advisor. A cat advisor, if yeah. you will. Yes, and then you can pick white and one and tap it to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control with vig. Oh. So that could end up paying big dividends. But let's talk about this card a little bit more in depth for a second. <laughs> what in the what in the hell is that thing in the foreground of the art? Like is that a is it a baboon that looks a like macaque? a that looks like a really close monkey of some kind? Yeah, it looks like a monkey that's just on all the drugs. Like you think, man, what's a drug? That monkey has taken it. That that, that person has given that monkey drugs. That person should be prosecuted for animal cruelty. Yes, <laughs> given that monkey. Angel dust. No, what's it called? Halo. Halo. Sn uh, grinded up Karuga. <laughs> That's what that monkey's on. <laughs> Kithkin Spell Duster. Spell Duster. <laughs> it's got white one sack destroy target enchantment on a five drop, two three with flying. And, and persist. It and it has persist. So it ETBs. Oh, hey, that never dies as long as Denry Clint has a plus one, plus one counter on him. Yeah. Because that would come back with a minus one and get a plus one from Denry. They cancel. Yeah. That's really good. That's infinite blocks for days, baby. Mm hmm. Uh, Mull Drifter, we all know, comes in, draws two cards. Yep. Nadir Kraken. Oh, you, you like this one, don't I you? like this card a lot because he makes tentacles. Yeah. This is a two, three for three Kraken. Whenever you draw a card, you can pay one. If you do, put a plus one counter on Nadir Kraken and create a 1-1 one, one blue tentacle. Yes, yeah, so you draw a card, you pay one, you get him bigger, and then you get another creature that's probably got like Vig flying and lifelink, which is pretty cool. And, and a plus one, plus one counter, probably. Orzov Advocus. Another advisor. Jeez. I play this, because it's a real card too. This is a 1-4 for three. At the beginning of your upkeep, at the beginning of our up, like my upkeep. Okay. Each player may put two plus one counters on a creature they control. Okay, that doesn't sound very good. If a player does, creatures that player controls can't attack us or a planeswalker we control until our next turn. So buff your guys, but they can't attack me. Eventually they can attack me. Yeah. Yeah. So was it you I was playing against where they had this and I I made my Tana gigantic and then I Commander damaged somebody out and made like 40 sapperlings and then Commander damaged the other guy and killed the Orzov Advocates player with the sapperlings. Oh, maybe. It was, I, I'm I don't the know only if that was one, you. I'm the only one I know that plays that card. <laughs> There's somebody else that plays that, but it, it might have been you, it might have been them. Either way, 
Rumbunctious Mutt. Rumbunctious Mutt enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls. Three, four, four, five. Skate wing spy. Skatey wingy spy. It adapt two. So you pay his adapt cost, which is blue five. And then he gets two plus one plus one counters on and then each creature you control with a plus one counter on it has flying. Sky Boon Evangelist. Oh, bird advisor. Bird advisor. <laughs> oh man. A three three for five. Flying, when Bird Advisor enters the battlefield, support six? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to six target creatures. That's right. Denry, Clint, and then a bunch of other guys. And then all your future guys get plus ones. Whenever a creature with a counter on it, it attacks one of your opponents, not a planeswalker they control, that creature gets flying until end of turn. That's pretty That's good. another one of those win con type cards. Let's talk about putting counters on creatures. We played this last week. I love this card, Sludge Monster. Give the old Sludgy a read. Sludge Monster is a 5-5 five, five for blue, blue, three. That's five. Whenever it comes into play, put a slime counter on up to one other target creature. Non-horror creatures with slime counters on them lose all abilities and become two-twos. Neat. <laughs> there you go. I just like that. Next up, we have Thrix the Sudden Storm. Oh, yeah, this guy. This is Flash Flying Spells with Converted Mana Cost 5 or Greater. Uh-oh. Yeah, costs one less to cast. And? Can't be counted. That's right. That's good. Trusty Retriever. Look at another dog. It's like he knew that you were going to be reading this one, too. <laughs> <laughs> a 2-3 for 4. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Put a plus one on him, which is cool. Or... Return an artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. So he's a badass or a good boy, depending on what mode you pick. Well, if Denry Klin, who's a cat, decides to have a plus one on him, your trusty retriever can both get a plus one and retrieve. Ooh. Yeah. Here's our uh, proliferator in Viral Drake. Infect and proliferate for uh, blue three. And, and it flies. And it's a one-four flyer for whatever. Yep. And this, I like this card a lot. Oh, yeah, and good. if you haven't played this, get one and play it because it's really good. Wandering Archaic. This is a five drop, four, four. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, they may pay two. Them, not us. Them yes. pay two. If they don't, we get to copy their stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we get the spell. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Man, Wandering Archaic is so good. Yeah. I like him so much. That's, That's the Creech. That's all the creatures. So five drops. Cards that appeal to Brando and I, yep. but they all do do the thing that the deck does, which is make uh, make bros. Now let's talk about or cards. Or make, make counters, sorry. Let's talk cards that cost three. Sure. Cards that cost three are all the mana rocks. <laughs> <laughs> if you've watched our top five in five mana rocks that cost three, you're going to know some of these. So we'll bang through them fairly quickly. Victory Charms. That's we get a mana... Or anybody gets a mana, and you can untap it each turn. Tooth of Ramos. S taps for a white, and sacks for another white. Skyclave Relic. Adds any color, indestructible, kicker, you get two extra. Spectral Searchlight. Any player gets a mana. Cryptolith Fragment. Enters the battlefield tapped, one mana of any color, each player loses one life, flips over into a bro that like attacks if somebody has like yeah. less than 10 life. Eye of Ramos Taps is, for a blue. Yeah. You can sack it for a blue. So those are good because they give you two mana, like burst mana, bang, bang, right? Like that. And Strixhaven Stadium. That uh, mana of any color, put a counter on it. Whenever you attack with a dude, remove 10 counters, player loses the game. Right. Got that, right? Okay, now we've got some other artifacts. of a Mind's Eye. We all know Mind's Eye. Yeah, this is in there because Karuga needs card draw that isn't like one or two mana. Mm -hmm. So whenever an opponent draws a card, we can pay one. If we do, we draw a card. Kind of an outdated card, but still good. It's still In this deck, it serves a purpose. You have Norn's Annex. Creatures can't attack us or a planeswalker we control, which is over and above what Ghostly Prison says mm -hmm. or, or propaganda. Right. Because they don't care about planeswalkers. This does. Can't attack us or a planeswalker we control unless they pay a Phyrexian white. That is white or two life. And then a Time Sifter. Fucking Time <laughs> Sifter. Have we ever played Time Sifter on the show? Has anybody out there ever played against Time Sifter and not been like, what is wrong with you? I don't know, but I'm not even kidding you. I walked into F&M the other day, like a couple weeks ago, 
And I think it was Kelsey asked me, Ryan, what's that card that everybody reveals the top of their library and the person with the highest CMC takes an extra turn? And I thought there, I used up all my fucking RAM for like four seconds. And I was like, Time Sifter. It's from Mirrodin. Good card. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's let's tell everybody what it costs five, obviously. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player removes the top card of their library from the game. The player who removed the card with the highest converted mana cost takes an extra turn after this one. If two or more players' cards are tied, you just keep doing it until somebody wins. And they're not revealed, they're removed from the game. They're exiled, yeah. So we're everything in our deck costs either zero, three, or five. You have a fairly solid chance of just taking a bunch of turns in a row. Because everybody's like yeah, I play one drop removal, I play two drop removal and ramp, because only two drop ramp is the only thing that I can fucking play. Yeah. Everybody plays three and four drop creatures to like win or combo with, or that's how much their commanders cost. No, we play fives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, spoiler alert, the rest of the deck costs five. <laughs> We're going to start with the enchantments. Cather's Crusade. Oh, man, this card... This card is always good. Creature comes into play, put a plus one, plus one counter on all the creatures you control. Based on what some of the creatures we do do, we know why that's there. Denry's going to have one, and he's just going to get put another one. Yeah. He's going to put another one. It's going to be outrageous. Oh. Elspeth Conquers Death. This is a saga. Chapter one, exile target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or greater. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, okay. Chapter two. Non-creature spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast until your next turn. Also good. Yep, slow them down. Chapter three, return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a plus one or a loyalty counter on it. Could I put a loyalty counter on the creature just to be cute? Ooh. Is there any reason I couldn't do that or a plus one, plus one counter on a planeswalker? Uh, I don't think that you can put... It would serve no purpose, but I'll bet you could do it. Well, if you're, if you're getting back a Gideon, then you turn him into a creature... Okay, in that one niche case, <laughs> it would count. But in every other case, I don't think anybody gives a shit. Haunted of Seeing wins. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card for each shrine you control, which would be one. 650. Holy wow. Yep. Inexorable Tide. Inexorable. I said it right. Whenever you cast a spell, proliferate. That's a cool card. It's pretty good. Instance. We have a Force of Will. That... Is a five drop counter spell. <laughs> <laughs> People forget that it costs five sometimes because it costs a card and a life. Dude, I never forget it costs five because one time, dude goes, uh, freaking Sensei's Divining Top, put this card back on top, and then counterbalances, reveals top card of library. If CMC matches the card I play, counter that spell, mm -hmm. reveals Force of Will, counters my five drop. What a piece oh, of shit. Oh, with a counterbalance. Oh. Man, man. Man, Legacy can be a miserable format. Intellectual Offering. Ooh, five drop. Choose an opponent. This is an instant. Choose an opponent. You and that opponent each draw three cards. This sounds like a white card. But yeah. But it's blue four. Okay, then choose an opponent. Untap all non-land permanents you control and all non-land permanents that player controls. This definitely sounds like a white card. That's a white card all day long. Yeah. Jace's Ingenuity. Oh, this is a Jace card. Yeah. Draw three cards for five mana. Mystic Confluence. Ooh, that's a good card. Blue, blue, three. Instant. Choose three. You can choose the same one more than once. Counter a spell unless they pay three or six or nine. Return target creature to its owner's hand or two or three creatures. Mm -hmm. Draw a card or two or three. Pretty good. Yeah. Sorceries. Sorks. Now let's start with, I'm going to talk about the art on Brilliant Plan in a second, but let's talk about, it's, it costs five, you draw three cards. Now what was this guy's Brilliant Plan? Look at the picture. Was his Brilliant Plan to just touch something really hot and burn his hand? I wouldn't trust anything that guy told me to do. I'm not sure. This guy's an idiot. It's like, oh, this thing's hot, I'm going to touch it. Then he's showing it to his general. He's like, look what I did, I'm stupid. Like, get out, no, you are not, you are not a strategist, sir. You are terrible. You are terrible. Of course, that's from Portal 3 Kingdoms originally. I'm sure that in the story, something happened. And in different cultures, people holding left hand up or right hand up does symbolize something. But he's pointing at his burn mark. Yes. Burned but himself. He's an idiot. Everything that I said is still true, though. Everything I said is also true. 
Buy Your Silence. Buy Your Silence. That is the name of the next card. Yes. Exile target non-land permanent. Its controller creates a treasure. That's what we call draft path. Because <laughs> it's a path that's meant for draft. <laughs> Damning verdict. Kills all creatures with no counters on them. And also is a pseudo, very subtle kind of play on words. Because it's also draft chaff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Doomscar destroys all creatures. Heed the mists. Heed the mists. Oh, is this another P3K card? No, nope. Kamigawa. Kamigawa. Okay, I was close. Okay, five drop sorcery arcane, if that matters. Put the top card of your library into your graveyard, then draw cards equal to that card's converted mana cost. No, what I like about this is it could be draw five for five, or you could mill a land and pay five to discard a <laughs> yeah, card. There's not very much... Um, top deck manipulation. Nope. But this is the kind of high risk, high reward we live for in the nation. That's right. Introduction to anal. (laughs) That's as far as I'm reading. That's as far as I'm reading. You get lots of lube. (laughs) Lots. It's a sorcery lesson. Exile target non-land permanent. Its controller draws a card. Cool. Do you ever exile your own thing to just draw a card? Not for five you don't. Promise of loyalty. <laughs> you have to read it. I can't. <laughs> Each player puts a vow counter on a dude they control, then sacks the rest. Each creature can't attack you or your planeswalkers as long as they have vow counters on them. Oh. Okay. Rush of Knowledge. This is a fun card. I like this yes. one. Yes. Draw cards equal to the highest converted mana cost among permanents you control. I like that. So probably five. Thought cast. Affinity for artifacts, draw two cards. So probably just cost one, but really it costs five. Tidings. Draw four cards for five. Time wipe. Return a creature you control to your hand, then destroy all the other creatures. Ugin's Insight. Ugi Insighty. Scry X, where X is the highest converted mana cost among permanents you control, then draw three cards. So scry five, draw three. That's a good card. That's a pretty good card. That's a gooder. I'd like to scry five. That's... You know, what, you know what else that is? It's the whole deck. Oh, yeah. It's the whole deck. There's 40 land all up in here, so it makes that oh, heed the mists be, even better. I thought there was going to be five land. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 40 is technically divisible by five, so that hey. counts for something, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Are we playing artifact lands to help us with that, um, that uh, what is it, thought cast? No. Oh, we could. No. We're we playing could. snow lands, though, because our boy Tyler, in addition to being our editor, is also a hipster. Yep. Likes to play them snow lands instead of regular basics. He's playing, t- uh, what is it, Tyrite Sanctum? Hell yeah, it is. Because that puts a counter on something and makes it a god. You put it on Denry Clin and then all your guys are... All of them are gods. Is that how it works? Give that card a read. Tyrite Sanctum is a land. Taps for colorless. You can tap two and it. Target legendary creature becomes a god in addition to its other types and gets a plus one, plus one counter. And then you can tap four and sack it to put an indestructible counter on target god. Oh, so you so you make him a god, then you put an indestructible counter on it, and then you ETB all your dudes, and then you get the go- the indestructible counters on all your guys. Yeah. That is pretty dang good. Yeah, that's, a, that's a sneaky piece of tech. I like on that. On a land. On a land. On a land. I mean, that takes a couple of turns to pull off, but I mean... Don't care. Probably worth it, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, and you could do, like, you know how it goes, though. Like, you just play a land. Okay, I can do this thing randomly three three rounds of the table later. Okay, end of your turn, I'll pay two, put a plus one counter on my guy. Yeah. And then untap, upkeep, draw, main phase one, pay four. My guy's indestructible. Play a dude, play a dude. They're indestructible, too. They're indestructible, too. And then the, you're off to the races at that point. You know what that card is really good in? What is it? Turgrid. Turgi. Yeah, good in Turgrid. Good in Taralf also, because uh-huh. they're both gods already, so they just come in and make your dudes everybody's gunning for way harder to kill. Yep. That's, yeah. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Super smart. Okay, let's um, let's let's ask some questions. Let's look at some strengths and weaknesses and budgets and do some, some more Magic the Gathering talk. Sure. Okay. What sort of deck do you think this is? This is pr- like this, this, <laughs> you think Azorius, Denry, Clin, plus one, plus ones, like indestructible counters could be a control deck, but I think secretly this is an aggro deck. You want to attack with this deck. I don't think this is going to be controlling the flow of anything, Ryan. No, I think this, this is, is going be, to. This deck is going from in to out. This yes. deck is 
with with its fist. Yes. And I think that as as a fist player, yes. <laughs> you can appreciate when somebody fists very hard yes. with Azorius colors. They just try really hard. We built an Azorius beatdown deck a year and a bit ago, and here's another one. I'm happy to see the archetype come back. Yes. Tyler, also a fister, also appreciates mono red. He's got like Ilharg the Razebor is like his favorite guy, and he's like the head of like 17 of Tyler's decks. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you do with like every red creature. Hey, come on now. <laughs> come on now. I only put Devilish Valet in four decks. That's not true. It's three. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Man, that's that's a cool card. Man, that I, I got good. that guy in one deck. Got that guy in one deck. It's not even the right deck. <laughs> <laughs> got him in my Sapperling deck. Doesn't matter. I want to take another minute, and I know we're going to thank Tyler at the end, but I want to just say this is like top five in five incarnate. Yeah. And I really do think that that uh, the top fives have rounded into shape, and it's funny to see somebody, the actual guy who does it. If, if it was anybody, I would say, oh, this guy's like fanboying CCO yeah. and, and making a deck that he thinks it will feature because it's like the stuff that we talk about on top five. Yeah. But it's fucking Tyler that's doing it. And I really do think that... <laughs> and he's fanboying because he knows that we'll feature it because no, he's no, talking no. about all the like stuff. Like I said earlier, it's Tyler doing it and he's the guy that does top five. And, and I think that that's kind of cool because he is actually taking the work that he does and expanding upon it in, in a way that like we showcase on the show. Shows pride in his work. It lets us point back to the to the top five and say like we think that this is good work sure so you should fucking watch it if you're not okay yeah, good point yeah good point yeah. solid point well yeah. said yeah the, the short the short version of that is go yeah. watch it yeah well well put strengths and weaknesses strengths and weaknesses we uh, we're playing a new commander we yep. always like to say that that's a strength because yep. the new hotness it's mm -hmm. cool it's something that we haven't done or seen before we hope the printing press is new Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think that it secretly draws lots of cards. There's lots of cards in there that say like draw three cards. Yeah. I think that that's important in an aggro deck. It's important to do that at, at, by like turn five. It's yeah. a good time to draw three cards. Well, turn five <laughs> is when your hand is down to like maybe one or two cards. Maybe. Oh, not in this deck. You're gonna have lots of cards oh, on turn yeah. five because you can't play nothing until turn three. You see. Oh yeah. And even then, there's only oh, five yeah. cards you can play. So okay. we'll get onto that and the weaknesses. <laughs> Yes, I, I I touched on it already. The the strength of taking pride in your work and yeah. showcasing what you do. I don't think enough people do that. I don't think that that you do that enough. I think that you should take more pride in your work. You tell people, fuck it. You tell the Gorm. You tell your boss. I think you should do that more. What? Hey, I do good fucking work. You should you should say that. Then you ask for a raise. You put your feet up on their desk. You uh, come into work in your underwear. I already do two of those things. Confidence, Brando. Like two of those things are things that I do. Oh, yeah. Wow. You, everybody out there can guess which two. <laughs> they can guess. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be that amiss if I thought that you would come to work in your underwear. I know. Sometimes you're the only one here. I know. <laughs> I know. Okay. Takes advantage of an interesting rule zero card in Karuga because it doesn't fit the color identity because Karuga has green in it. I'm yeah. going to call that a strength because I'm sure... Tyler playing in the nation, playing with his friends is articulate enough to express that. And if you go in and say, yo, everything in my deck costs five. I need all the help I can get. People will probably be like, yeah, okay. Yes. We're going to flip that over to, to a weakness though, because not everybody is into, not everybody fetishizes the rule zero as yeah, we do. That's right. And, and sometimes you don't get to do that angle. Sometimes you don't get to play that. Some people aren't into that type of thing. Right. Yeah. Like imagine they say, uh, oh, okay and then the one time ever that the deck goes like three drop into four drop into five drop and, and it's like karuga draw karuga draw karuga draw karuga draw cathar's crusade make all my guys indestructible kill you oh what the fuck this is bullshit you just did that because you get to play karuga like yeah you can imagine that scenario yeah i can so i don't know i don't want to call it baggage but some people aren't into it yeah and also the, the, the everything costs five and with the format speeding up a little bit even in casual games you're gonna have a hard time catching up when you're starting to roll on turn four five <laughs> and you know damn well that that's where you're gonna start because you can't do anything turn one and two yes 
yep, 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 yep. Now that that is like kind of my my other weakness is obviously it's underpowered due to its speed. Yes. Yes. Also, I have in brackets, but who cares? <laughs> yeah, like it doesn't matter because this deck is hilarious and it's very it's very cool. But at the end of the day, like if you're playing it to try and win a game of Magic, you're in an uphill struggle. Cause... That's you know what, and that's why uh, that's why I say this would be in the same pod at, in Command Fest Bellevue when we're there yeah. with Crab Tribal. Yeah. Because I'm always going uphill with crabs because the deck is just so underpowered, mm-hmm. right? I'm playing one fives, <laughs> yeah, right? with no with just flavor text. Right? <laughs> Anyways, my last weakness: some cards are pretty spendy just to like play this deck. Yeah, for right? a meme deck, yeah, for a meme deck. So let's move into the budget, the budget section. Total cost of this deck about three hundred fifty bucks. A now, third of that is Force of Will. Force of Will is $140. Cut it. Yep. Yeah, okay. Hollowed Fountain and Ottawa, the Soaring City. Ottawa or whatever it Ottawa, is. Ottawa, yeah. Ottawa. That's the capital of Canada, FYI. Yeah. Are another 36. Ancient Tomb, $70. Yeah. <laughs> Ancient Tomb does go a long way to help you cast your five drops. Yeah, Ancient Tomb I'll does change much. the game. Yeah. Yep. And that Tefri, who isn't a five loyalty, five drop planeswalker. $35. $35. So if you cut those five cards, this deck, $69. (laughs) (laughs) Wait. Nice. Yes. It's what we're supposed to say, right? Yes, yes, yes. It it was originally, it was like 70 some. And I was like, no, I got to cut one more card to like get it down even more. (laughs) <laughs> and then it like it just auto filled the cell in the show notes to sixty nine. Nice. I was like, that's the perfect card. Yeah. Whatever the card I cut was, probably the hollowed fountain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a two color deck. You don't need the hollowed fountain for sixteen bucks, do you? No. Basic. No. Yeah. Oh, artifact land to make your thought cast or whatever cheap. You could play the indestructible artifact land from whatever set that was from. Marty Ho Ho. Yeah. Just yeah, Marty Ho ETB's tap gives you two colors and is an artifact yeah. land for your thought. We're going to have a conversation at some point probably on the show about whether or not Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds have any place in two color decks anymore. We're going to have oh, that yeah. con- we're going to have that conversation together. Oh. Cuz I think it's an interesting one to have cuz That I, sounds like a good topic. I, like I that. think it might be time for them to just peace out. Yeah, just be gone now. But I got foils. Me too. Dang. I don't want to see him go, but I mean, I I think it's time that we see them go. Yes. That's what I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write with a Sharpie, Terramorphic Foothills. Terramorphic <laughs> Delta. <laughs> They're just going to become freaking fetch lands. <laughs> okay, final section. We got a spice calculator spice today. Spice calculator. Everybody's favorite. And this is a doozy. This, here we are. We've we've made it, Ryan. Let's and, let's do it. And of course, Tyler, being affiliated with CCO in some way, shape, or form, knows how to manipulate the formula a little bit. He knows <laughs> he's like this is inside baseball, right? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he built he he backwards engineered or whatever the formula here. <laughs> so I've got him down for <clears throat> three dedicated win conditions. He can attack. Mm-hmm. He's got. Azor's Elocutor Jesus. <laughs> and there is an infect win in there. There is, there is that, an yes. infect win and you can proliferate. Yes. Okay, so there's three win cons. Okay. Okay. We've got an average CMC. Get this. 265. How does that how does that even work? That's impossible. Moxfield's math, I think, is wrong. They must be including the land. The land. They have to be. Because that that's impossible. If I make it higher, let's say That's I make an impossible number. It let's has say, to be three point something. It has to be. Even it's if pro- I make it four. It's probably four. If I make it between three and four, or three and five, the average of three plus five equals four, it makes the spice calculator go even higher. <laughs> well, then do it because I did, I mathematically did. it's impossible that it's below three. Cards different than the stock list for Denry Clinn on edhrec.com, of which there are 66 decks. Yeah, he's way down there along with good companies such as Ojatai Soul of Winter. Sure. And Niambi Faithful Healer. Oh. I didn't even remember that card existed. Nope. But um, here's the thing. 44 different cards than the stock list on edhrec.com. Ooh. Four average mana value. Three dedicated win cons, only 66 lists. Tyler reverse engineered to get a 89.7 <laughs> spice. <laughs> so we're going to round up there to a 90. There, to, yeah, d- Wow. 90 on the old spicer. Wow. <laughs> so if Tyler builds this deck, 
because I know that he's got CCO Spice rating stickers. Oh. And he whips this bad boy out. He brings a deck box out with a sticker on it, which you can get at commandercrucco.com slash store. Yep. Link in the show notes. And it says fucking 90 on it. Oh. I'm, I'm playing that deck. Yes. I'm I would. playing that deck. Yeah, I will, I will definitely play against it. I will contribute foils to this deck so it <laughs> re- so it achieves 100% pimp. You could... That's doable. It's 100% doable. You can and, definitely 100% do that. And if he cuts like those a few expensive cards out and makes it $69. Nice. Oh, man. When, you're, when your spice rating is higher than what your deck costs, <laughs> you know that you've made a CCO classic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh, that is fantastic. It's less than a dollar per Scoville unit. <laughs> CC Oval Unit. There we go. Oh, That's amazing. Man. That is excellent. That's so fantastic. So big thanks to T Coats, Tyler, Editor Tyler, for sending the deck in and catering to our fancy. Yes. Well, and, wait, hang on. Wait a second. And You're, reverse engineering the spice calculator. Buddy's wrapping it up before he has to answer the burning question on everyone's mind. Oh. What's the secret we revealed oh, today, Ryan? The secret is there's no secret. Play whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> That's the secret. <laughs> And the key to doing that, the key to doing that is to support your local gaming store. And if they don't have the things you want, you head on over to (laughs) FusionGamingOnline.com. Use special promo code CCOSPRING to pick up all the jank garbage that you can find. See if you can beat T Coats' score. 90 is pretty high. It's the highest one ever. Is that the highest one ever? It's 100% the highest spice rating we've ever had with the exception of the time that we built a deck where we purposely couldn't use cards off of the... EDHREC.com list. Oh, yes, yes. We did do that one time, and, and we did get higher. Oh, yes. yeah. And this, of course, is using the new Spice Calculator that you can download from CommanderCoco.com, and it, it does include, like, some reconfigured math. Yeah. So, <clears throat> of course, it's the highest one on the new formula, but, but it's also the highest one ever yeah. that uh, we didn't purposely try to, ourselves, our own selves, try to break. Yes. Which I think was, like, like a 112 or it was like it was very it, like it didn't even make sense yeah because like you 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 can't build a deck like that yeah the mathematics so. of it didn't didn't really add up although the deck was pretty cool as i recall oh sure yeah in any yeah. case thanks to everybody involved with putting this jank trash together we're looking forward to revealing more secrets to you next week so be there with us on the next episode of commander cookout podcast hit our theme song play whatever you want.